Oh, good morning, everybody. This is your teacher, Mr. Brewer. Nice to see you again. Hope you're all doing well on this Monday morning of uh, quarantine. Um, so, if you're watching this video, you most likely received a new packet. Uh, this new packet contains five sections in it. So, if you do about one every two days, if you're just if you're just working Monday through Friday. You should be just fine. Um, so let's go over this section. This is circles and arcs. So we're going to learn a new uh, shape, basically. Uh, well, you're, you, you probably are familiar with circles. Uh, let's go over the definition. A circle is the set of all points equidistant from a given point called the center. You name a circle by its center. So the circle P is shown at right. So this circle is named by its center. The radius is a segment that has one endpoint at the center and the other endpoint on the actual circle itself. So we see um, they show this radius. This is PC, the center, and the point C is on the circle. And then PA and PB are also radii, which is the plural of radius. Uh, congruent circles will have congruent radii. A diameter is a segment that contains the center of a circle and has both endpoints. So a a b a b would be the diameter. It stretches from this endpoint a to the endpoint b, containing the center p. Okay, and then a central angle is an angle whose vertex vertex is the center of the circle. Angle CPA is a central angle. So P being the center of that angle, its vertex is at the center of the circle. So let's look at a real world example containing circles. Data analysis. To learn how people really spend their time, a research firm studied the hour by hour activities of 3,600 people. The participants were between 18 and 90 years old. Each participant was sent a 24 hour recording sheet every March for three years from 2000 to 2002. The study found that people spend most of their time sleeping, working, and watching TV. Some info from the study is shown in this circle graph. Find the measure of each central angle in the circle graph. So you can kind of make out the circle graph here. Sleep is 31%, work is 20%, entertainment is 18%. Uh, looks like must do, must do is seven percent. Food is nine percent. Other is fifteen percent. Let's go ahead and work on how to do this. So there are three hundred and sixty degrees in a circle. To find the measure of each central angle in the circle graph, we're going to find the corresponding percent of three hundred and sixty. So let's look at it. Um, each percentage was given. The first one was sleep. Okay, that was 31%. We want to find the angle of 31% of a circle. So, in a circle we have 360 degrees. So, you want to find out what 31% of 360 is. The way to do this is to go into a calculator, and you just type it in just like this. You type in 360, you hit the time button, and you you enter 31% as a decimal. 31% as a decimal, you're going to take the decimal, which is to the right of the 1 here, and we're going to move it to the left two places. So you're going to multiply that by 0 0.31. And you should get 111.6. So sleep would be basically 111 degrees. If we're thinking of a circle, it's 360 degrees. Sleep is 111 degrees. Let's look at food. So food was 9%. So if you want to try this, pause the video right now and punch this in the calculator. 9% of 360. Food is going to be 32.4 degrees of the circle. Work. Work was 20%, so 20% 20 of 360 
is 72 degrees. Other, other was 15% of 360. That's equal to this little bit 54 degrees. Entertainment. And they're talking about TV. That's I think that's a heck of a long time to be watching TV, but apparently so that was 18% of 360. Uh, nowadays we wouldn't call this TV, we would call it uh, social media cell phones. That was 64 degrees. And then must do was 7%. 7% of 360. So you plug that into the calculator, 360 times 0 0.07. 25.2. Okay, now if you took all these numbers and you add them up, you'd get 360 degrees, which is how many degrees are in a circle. Just like if I took up all these percentages and added these up, that would be 100%. So we're looking at a full circle, that's 100% of the circle. I have 100 percentile points represented in these six categories, and then I have 360 degrees represented in these six categories. Um, that, I, that pretty much answers letter A. What does each quantity represent? It's um, how much degrees of the circle each um, category takes up. Each section of the circle graph represents an average explain. Uh, that was because they had interviewed a whole bunch of different people and they averaged out their average time spent on these activities. Alright, next part. An arc is a part of a circle. One type of arc, a semicircle, is half of a circle. So that's a semicircle. A minor arc is smaller, smaller than a semicircle, and a major arc is greater than a semicircle. So let's draw three circles. I'm going to freehand these. They're a little oblong. I mean, they're a little misshapen. By the way, if you see this thing here, that was a staple when I photocopied these. So a semicircle, they said, each of these is going to need that central point P. A semicircle is going to be half. Half, okay? It's going to be half the circle. And when you're, when you're calling an arc, you want to call it by the two endpoints and a point on the circle. And then I, I call it TRS. This is the order in which they appear. TRS. And then you have this little arc above the letters. So this is a semicircle. Semicircle. The measure of this, the measure of TRS is 100, is 180 degrees. That's half a circle. 360 divided by 2 is 180. Okay, next one. I start out with my central point, P. I'm going to make two points here. And a third point. And so, look here, we have we have uh, a segment going from the central point to R and a segment going from the central point to S. They're clearly less. If I conjoin these two segments with this arc, it's clearly less than a semicircle. Semicircle would go halfway around. This goes less than halfway. So I'll call this arc RS. And this is a minor arc. It's a minor arc, meaning it's less than a semicircle. So, um, this is less than 180 degrees. And then also we can say that the measure of the arc RS is equal to the measure of the angle RPS, the central angle RPS. 
RPS. So this arc, the amount of degrees in it, is equal to this angle here. Let's do one more arc. Okay, R T S R T S. Here I have my center point P. I have T and S. I have R. So we're looking at the arc R T S. Starting at R T S. So this arc starts at R, it includes T, and then it travels all the way to S. So this is a major arc. Is a major arc. And this is big this is bigger than a semicircle. And we could say that the measure of this arc RTS is equal to the amount of degrees in a circle, 360, minus the measure of RS. So RS is this segment. RTS would be the arc that we're calling. RS is the segment that's not included between RTS. So the measure of this arc, RTS, is equal to the whole circle minus the chunk that's not part of the arc. Okay, so let's identify some arcs. <coughs> so we're going to identify identify the following in circle O. So I have my circle. This is circle O, so that's going to be my central point. And I've got these points on the circle AD, EC. So we'll start with letter A. I'm going to go out here to have more space. Identify all the minor arcs. Let's look at the minor arcs. These are the minor arcs. This is anything less than a semicircle. So let's look at our minor arcs. We have AD is less than a semicircle. AC is less than a semicircle. CE is less than half the circle. And DE is less than half the circle. DC would be an example of half the circle. So that's not one of our minor arcs. So let's list these all. We have AD. AD is one of them. CE. AC. And DE. Boom. Let's see if I can shade these. Make it a little more apparent. Boom. That's a, that's a minor arc. AC is a minor. CE is a minor arc. And DE is also a minor arc. Now let's list our semicircles. Semicircles. Um, anything that spans half the circle. So DEC is a semicircle. DEC would be one. ECA is another one. CAD. And A, D, E. These are all semicircles. If you listed them in the opposite direction, like E, D, A, D, A, C, A, C, E, and C, E, D, that's okay. And then let's list all of our major arcs that contain the point A. With the point a. Okay. Um, anything with the point A, so uh, looks like um, A, C, D is one of them. So we're going from A, C all the way to D. That's a major arc since it's greater than a semicircle. Um, C, E, A. C, E, A is another. 
E D C E D C would be another. Notice how the letter, the point A is not in the actual name of the major arc. However, it still contains that point since going from E D C we're skipping over, we're still including it, we're just not naming it. It's still part of the arc. And then lastly, D A E. And then you can do the other one if you'd like. Identify the four major arcs that contain the point E. So let's go over one more thing in this video, the arc addition postulate. But before we do that, we have to name adjacent arcs. Adjacent arcs are arcs of the same circle that have exactly one point in common. You can add the measures of adjacent arcs just as you can add the measures of adjacent angles. So let's write this down. The measure The measure of the arc formed by two adjacent arcs is, this is the arc addition postulate, so it's going to include a sum, is the sum of the measures of the two arcs. So we're just going to add those together. So we have this example, the measure of the arc ABC. ABC is equal to the measure of the arc AB. AB is here. Plus the measure of the arc BC. So ABC, this whole arc here, is equal to this smaller arc plus this smaller arc. I'm going to flip the page. We're going to find the measure of arcs. We want to find the measure of each arc. So let's do arc BC. So the measure of arc BC is equal to the central angle formed by BOC. And we can see that it's 32 degrees, so the arc BC has a measure of 32 degrees. Okay, next one. BD. BD is from here, B to D. And we need to add these together. We're going to add two angles together to get that one. That's going to be the measure of BC plus the measure of CD. So we're going to use the arc, the, um, what do we call it? Just like this. The arc addition postulate. So we're going to add these two together. So we're going to add together 32 which is here, plus 58. And together those equal 90 degrees. Next we'll find the measure of arc ABC. So let's look at that. A, B, C. Okay, this is a big one. Um, I can see that uh, ABC is a semicircle. So ABC is a semicircle. So how many degrees are in a semicircle? 180 degrees. And then lastly, let's let's find the measure of arc AB. AB, where is AB? A to B. So we're going to take the measure of the semicircle and we're going to subtract that 32 right there. So that's going to be the measure of ABC minus the arc BC, which is equal to 180, that's this whole semicircle, minus that 32 degrees right there. So that's going to be 148 degrees. Okay, that concludes objective one for this video. Um, so go to the uh, Google Classroom and then you'll be able to find the 
a video for objective two, and then some tutorials on how to do some of these exercises. Thanks for watching.